Here I'm going to start the cell homeostasis virtual lab. In this lab, we're going to look at see how a cell uh, changes when it's in different environments. So we're going to look at different concentrations of dissolved sugar in a beaker to represent the cell's external environment and then use the same concentration of sugar in this tubing that's going to represent the cell. So here are my lab materials. I've got a balance, I've got sugar, I've got a uh, graduated cylinder with water, and I've got a stirring rod. So you'll notice, because I want you guys to do this later, that you're going to drag these. So I'm going to put uh, the beaker A, and it tells me to fill it with 100 milliliters of water from the graduated cylinder. So I'm just going to follow the uh, instructions, and I just click on and drag whatever it tells me to do. You've now created the control group for the investigation and can set beaker A aside. Remember that a control group is there for comparison. So now it's time to create the experimental groups. So B, C, D, and E will be experimental groups. So I'm going to put beaker B over here, and I'm going to put the same amount of water in it because that would be a constant. And now I'm going to set beaker B aside. So beaker B is going to have a 0% solution, meaning it has no sugar in it. It's just 100% water. So now I've got beaker C. I'm going to add the same amount of water because that will be constant. And then I'm going to um, weigh out a certain amount of sugar. Uh, when you use the balance, you have to tear it. So that means to make it zero. And now I'm going to add 50 grams of sugar. Okay, so I just click on here and I add 50 grams. Then it tells me to pour it into here. So I just click and move it over here. And it tells me to stir it. I went too quick. So now I'm going to stir it. And now I'm stirring it in and I'm making a solution that's a 5% sugar solution. That means that 5% of the molecules are the sugar molecules and the other 95% are water molecules. So now I've got beaker D and I'm going to have a thousand milliliters of water. And now I'm going to um, weigh out uh, more sugar. Oh, I need to zero this. I'm going to add 100 grams of sugar. I'm going to pour this into the water. And then I'm going to stir it. So now I've created a 10% solution. So what you need to understand is that in a 10% solution, 10% is the sugar and 90% is the water. So as I'm going from here to here, I am having more solvent, which is water. I'm sorry, less solvent and more solute. So these are more concentrated solutions. It's the same amount of solvent, but I've, I've got more solute, so the concentration changes. Um, so now I'm adding the 1,000 milliliters of water. And I am weighing this, and I'm going to zero it. And I'm adding sugar. So this is going to be my most concentrated solution because it's got 150 grams of sugar in the water, whereas this one only had 100 and this one only had 50. I'm going to stir it up so that those sugar molecules are dissolved and evenly mixed. And so now I have these four different experimental groups. So these are going to represent the outside solutions um, that a cell is going to be placed in. These are representing the cell. So the dialysis tubing is semi-permeable. Some things can move in and out. Um, so I'm going to place the 0% in the, what does it tell me? I need to read you. One has been filled with water. The rest have been filled with 50 to 100 mils. So it says continue. I wasn't reading. All right. So I need to mass each one. So I'm going to put this on the scale. Um, continue. I was going too quickly. So I'm going to lay these on the scale to mass them. 
and then I'm going to put it in here. And then I'm going to lay this on the scale to find its mass. And then I'm going to put it in here. And then I'm going to lay this on the scale and find its mass. And I'm going to put it in here. And I'm going to lay this on the scale and find its mass. And then I'm going to put it in here. You'll notice all of the um, dialysis tubes had 10% sugar solutions in them, except for the control, which had 0%. Okay? So now while the dialysis tube is sitting in these different beakers of uh, water and sugar, the water is going to move in and out. Okay? Um, the sugar is not actually going to move. So now I'm going to wait, and this is going to be osmosis. It's osmosis because the water can move in and out of the tube, but the sugar is really too big to move. The water is going to move toward the solution that is more concentrated. Okay? So this is the same thing with our cells. These dialysis tubings are representing cells. So these would be cells in different types of solutions. So it takes time. So now I'm going to take these back out and mass them. So this first one started at 17.59 and ended up at 17.66. It was 0% inside and the control was 0% outside. We would call that isotonic. The water would move in and out at the same rate. The second one, it's a 10% solution but it was placed in a 0% solution. So you'll notice that this gained mass, water moved into the dialysis tube. And if this was a cell, water would be moving into it and causing it to expand. So in the 5% solution, you'll notice that it increased mass. So it didn't increase as great an amount as the this one um, did, but so from 0 to 10, it increased a lot. From 5 to 10, it increased a little bit. Okay, But water moved into the tube, or water would move into the cell and cause it to expand. So in this one, I have a 10% solution on the outside and a 10% solution on the inside. And you'll notice that the change is very minor. You'd almost say like barely changed at all. And then lastly, I have a 15% solution outside and a 10% solution inside. So let's look at the mass. You notice that the mass goes down. So what's happening is water's actually leaving this tube and going into the beaker. For your cell, water's leaving the cell and going out. So these would represent, this, this would be right here, an example where, or these two would be if you um, drank too much water, way, way, way too much, the water would go into your cells and cause them to expand, and that could actually be harmful. This is why you, your body needs to regulate the amount of water, and your excretory system and hormones help for you to pee out the certain amount of water so that you have the correct amount in your cells. This is what you want, okay? The same percent inside and same percent outside. They're, they're change, the volume, the size of your cells does not change very much. This would be like if you drink salt water. Now, if you drink salt water, the water would leave your cells and you would, um, your cells would shrink. So you then are going to answer these questions. And the question is, which ones had little or no mass change? And then there's another question afterwards.